Hello, and a special welcome to Martin Treckles, uh, who is joining us from the Mesa Botanic Gardens in Belgium. He's the biodiversity data scientist and project coordinator, and I think a background in physics, if I remember right, Martin? Yes, that's correct. Okay. My path personally first crossed with Martin through digitization-focused events organized by, um, I can put the links in the chat, but to ISDIG and DISCO, uh, where IDIG Bio uh, participated, and also through the Biodiversity Information Standards TADWIG organization uh, that brings you standards like Darwin for. Um, Matt, would you like to start off? Sure. So um, for those of you who are joining us now, uh, Martin and I don't really know each other very well. And um, what you're going to get here, I think, in the next 30 or 40 minutes is sort of a candid, candid getting to know each other. It's sort of like maybe we're at the, what is this called, uh, instant dating kind of thing. Um, we originally wanted to have Martin tomorrow where we have a bit more of a focus on the programming side of TaxonWorks, right? We think of TaxonWorks as for users and developers. And so there'll be, this will be an introduction to some of the topics and in, in, in intersect with some of the topics that we're gonna cover uh, with lots of opportunities tomorrow as well. So one of the topics then that we thought about is that you know, TaxonWorks is an open source code base and it evolves over time. And we wanted to sort of get into how that evolves and what we could sort of anticipate in that evolution. So. Maybe to start off with Martin, can you tell us a little bit about your role and just what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Anything you'd like to share in that regard? Yes, and especially I think it needs a little bit of background on, on, on why I ended up here. Um, so basically, I, indeed, like Debbie said, I started uh, in the, now more or, more or less five years ago in the biodiversity community. Uh, working on the European projects uh, that are focused around DISCO. And so for three of those years, I'm now coordinating uh, the DISCO Flanders project, which is a, a local, a, a regional project from our funding agency to uh, bring our natural science collections closer to uh, what the DISCO research infrastructure uh, will be. And... In the framework of that project, one of the main things that, that we were planning to do was updating our collection management system. So basically, uh, we are still at the moment running on a very old uh, system and we want to be future proof, make sure that every, anything we use is uh, readily usable uh, to publish our data wherever it's needed uh, with some open APIs, etc. And so we started this uh, process now about uh, two years ago. And our team, we have a dedicated biodiversity informatics team here uh, at Massa. We are very much into uh, open science, open software, um, making sure that we can contribute to the community as much as possible. But there was one uh, downside. Basically, the Botanic Garden is an uh, agency of the Flemish government. So basically for everything we do, we also need to uh, make sure that we, uh, that we follow all the rules that uh, our governmental agencies have to follow. So basically when we were start looking for um, a collection management system, it was actually very difficult to find resources to uh, do some active development or to engage actively with this open source uh, initiatives. And TaxonWorks is one of those, but there's Dina and there are several others uh, around. So I started contacting people and saying like, look, we are looking for a new system that we uh, potentially can use within our garden. How we can we collaborate? But then after a while, it became clear that the, the investment that we as a garden uh, had to do was over a certain limit. So we had to go via a public tendering procedure. And it was actually striking because uh, whenever we started this uh, public tendering procedure, we made it open for everyone. Uh, so we, we also tried to uh, distribute it as widely as possible. And the only ones uh, reacting to those uh, tendering process is uh, commercial companies. Um, 
maybe for obvious reasons, but for me, that wasn't so obvious why this is always uh, only uh, commercial uh, companies. Because normally, or I assume that for most open source uh, projects, there is someone uh, putting his or her shoulders uh, underneath that project. So we were actually in a position that we could start funding uh, such initiatives, but it turned out to be very difficult. And then we started talking and see what, what could be the reasons for it. And I'm actually at, to date still not really sure uh, what are the exact reasons why people are bailing out on this kind of uh, tenders. And it's a bit of a pity. The sad thing is that, of course, it's for us easier to do this through uh, tendering than putting really people behind it, because to find people and to bring them in in a very timely manner for these kind of things is very difficult. And that's how I ended up here. And yeah. wanting to hear from the community how we can actually increase this kind of collaborations and make sure that our institutes or agencies are building this kind of support uh, into their organization or in, into their structure, how to help others to do that, et cetera. Thanks, that's a wonderful intro. And I'll, maybe I'll follow up with our, our perspective, right? So I got the email and I thank you very much for that. Uh, Debbie and I saw the, the tender come across <clears throat> um, and I thought, oh, wow, cool, we'll look at it. And I opened it up and I read through the list of requirements and I could check a lot of boxes, right? I've been working with Taxon Works for about 10 years and I was relatively confident that we conceptually overlapped what was needed. Was, did we have everything, you know, that would be needed? No, perhaps not. But in the tender, I also read and I was very happy to read that there would be work to sort of refine certain steps. So I actually felt that that tender and that proposal was an extremely good match with us. And I think what you raised is the really important part. Why didn't we pull the trigger? Why didn't we take the initiative in our group to propose Taxon Works as a potential solution? And um, maybe, you know, that, that that's a great question. That makes me think that well, the short answer to that is we just didn't have enough staff. We know that people come to us, uh, at least with our group, we're, we're an endowed group. We have fixed support for our biodiversity informatics group. And we're at a level where we have a lot of people, we have an internal tracker now that have come to us and said, we'd like to use your tools, right? We have 30, 40 people, including collections, including legacy data sets, including, um, you know, major grant users. We'd like to come and provide you resources. We love TaxonWorks. We love the open source idea. Um, we love contributing to the idea of contributing to a bigger community. Um, please take our money. And we know on our thing, on our to-do list, on our internal to-do list, that we have to do better at being able to say, here's how. Here's how we can take your money. Here's what we can do, etc." This reminds me that one of the things that came across my desk a couple of days ago from one of our research heads here was an NSF program that essentially um, you can apply for to build the infrastructure on top of your open source projects that would essentially add positions that would manage these kinds of requests. And so we need to look further into that. I am very much, this is one of my bias, I'm very much want to do things. I don't want to talk about things. Um, and I, I am sort of anti-administration, right? Like that investment and that balance at that certain levels. But it's clear that we need to invest in administration at some levels so that we could perhaps take advantage of these efforts and then see those resources pour into the open source world. Um, so I do think, and maybe we can open it up to the chat as well, if you've experienced similar things, um, how do we get past this? How do we make it so that Taxon Works just is a no-brainer for that kind of tender? Like that tender was darn close overlap. You know, there was a lot of great philosophy behind it. There was clearly word, verbiage in there that was open to open source type ideas, etc. cetera. Um, and, and I would actually even open up the question more how can we as 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 the one that are issuing this tender make sure that that we can even get closer to this community or do we have to make sure that in our uh or 
staff planning for the coming years that we foresee someone that can can do uh, development, although that's very difficult to find. And and although I'm uh, I can program a little bit, it's it's not that I'm a developer. So, but we have to allocate time to people, I guess, or we have to make sure that that this is something we we uh, support on the long term without having direct results because. That's another thing. Uh, if we if we go for a tender, of course, people are expecting somehow that it's working right out of the box, which is with open source uh, not the case or not not often the case. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, making sure that we raise awareness within the community, but not only with the ones that are working on the ground, but on the broader community that manage expectations actually how can we yeah. do this better how how can we uh, make sure that we are future proof on this mm -hmm. yeah i think uh uh there was a comment here that we could follow some specific model pause it that also reminds me that one of the things that you know taxon works as a tiny tiny little fish um we hit some nice milestones this year with outside contributors providing code that really made a difference and last year as well so we feel like we made some progress there, but one of the, the aspiring projects that I think of is the Blender project, blender.org, right? That started off as a commercial, but then went open source. It's the 3D rendering software. And that to me is like, they've just nailed what we could do at a global level. They have a whole institute that's, um, you know, committed to supporting that project. They have the staff in place to get industry tires from Hollywood and all of the renderers etc and it's just this amazing global model that has resulted in an amazing tool right like this is incredible the way that they've you know i cannot think of um you know a more diverse software ecosystem that they can handle and address from an architecture standpoint from a complexity standpoint from a wrangling people standpoint um so how can we be a tiny little blender org right or how can how can what can we learn from them is my sort of question. And another thing I'm, I'm actually wondering, and, and people can add this in the chat if they want, oh, how many of the people here around or institutions that are represented here are able to dedicate people time to open source development? Because basically that's also something which is uh, for the moment, I think lacking a lot. Uh, and this is something very difficult to sell uh, within an institution that you spend uh, time on open source development um, or open source development, which is not owned by your institution. Uh, and a lot of the people that are engaged in these kind of things do this in their free time. And so we basically should make this more institutional and not, not a hobby project for some people. And, and mm -hmm. that's something which is interesting me, who, who, that, who succeeded in getting that uh, going in their in institutions and how. Mm -hmm. So David says, should tendering process accommodate pre-existing governance models from open source projects? One example is a requirement for a full-time developer and sysadmin that the org issuing the tender commits to um, as a statement in the tender itself. Yeah, David. I mean, one of our mission statements with TaxonWorks is that we are for developers and users, and it is our mission, whether or not we can make promises, to try to support TaxonWorks being used and provided by other providers, right? That level of system administration that is required to ensure there's a container or a deployment strategy, there's an update strategy, um, there's all of those little elements in place that make it possible for others to start to use the software um, as they see fit. And so it is our mission or mandate, and I think we check that box, I don't know how practically, to work with people who say, well, we'll use us, but we need help doing X, Y, and Z in deployment and management. We want to work and see where what wall we hit, see what limits we hit and what we can do there. Katie asks, what kind of processes do you have in place to ensure the community contributed code is accepted into the main code? It's a great question, uh, Katie, and I think maybe you're coming too from the Symbiota process. So, um, you know, how, and I guess the question for Martin would be like, how would you have to structure contributions from your team 
so that we could all mesh, you know, into the main model. And, and you're raising the idea that there's a complexity. We can have forks of open source projects that can go back and forth. And who are the people like, is that your role? Like say, say TaxonWorks was accepted. Maybe you could describe what your role would have been at that time. Does that help us figure out? Like, like if there was a tender and an open source project was added, uh, selected, what would have happened? What would you see have changed in that sense um, versus, you know, the, the group that you did select? From my personal point of view, I have to say that, like, I, I conceptually, the idea of forking is nice, uh, but it's almost, it almost always results in two things diverging to a different kind of uh, product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in ours, that's something we didn't want. So basically, if we would have been able to to uh, to go with Taxonworks as, as, as our uh, subscriber, then my preference would have been that we stick to the to the to the main code uh, and not to to any kind of uh, different kind of fork, because it's according to me, the most future proof uh, solution. I could have yeah. imagined that yeah. some kind of third party would have applied for the tender and then developed something on top of TaxonWorks, but I'm not sure that that's the most efficient way to, to work. Understood. So just imagining it, TaxonWorks gets accepted. You start coding on the first branch. How many people are you bringing to the table then? Like how many people is our team now working with in an open source world? Like understanding some of that would would help provide the context for the sort of the multiplication of the community size that's a that's a difficult question of course mm -hmm. uh what we did add to the tendering and i don't know if you remember that is that we um included um kind of cost estimation sheet where there was the possibility to add in-kind contributions from us uh, that we could make an estimate on how much in kind we would have to contribute uh, to the development of the software or to the data migration or whatever. Um, and there was this added up in the total cost, of course, of the, the whole project. But to be honest, making uh, people available within the institution to dedicate time to this is not so easy because I many of us are already quite overloaded with tasks and um, having this on top of it is not the most interesting sure or uh so yeah that's a, that's a difficult one to answer you, at least you used one other word there that i think complicated things now that i think about it more you said migration and really you're saying when I read that, that this is a multifaceted problem. A, we have to move legacy data forward, which presents a whole set of challenges. We have to map semantics. We have to data clean. We have to be, we have to understand what is okay to lose. Where do we want to gain? That in and of itself requires people before we even get to start coding out the new features in TaxonWorks that you is necessary for as well. So understanding how we can parcel those two steps uh, into separate pieces um, may help us, you know, move to an open source, or open source world. Wow, already two minutes. Um, Katie asked, uh, and I think there was another question about um, what place, kinds of processes do you have in place to ensure the community contributed code is acceptable into the main code? Katie, the number one thing, and we can talk more about this next, next tomorrow, is that we have unit tests. We have lots and lots of unit tests. And I'll share today, and I wanna to share tomorrow, that this year and last year really marked milestones for us in that uh, we have Tom Klein here in the audience who jumped in completely unexpectedly and provided incredible code contributions to our code base. And some of the questions that Tom wrote, um, Tom was exemplary in terms of opening issues, acting, asking questions, trying to get understand, you know, the philosophy behind TaxonWorks and the code base and its architecture. So if you want to see how that worked, there's a public track of that. 
But one of the things Tom asked is, I think we should do it this way. You know, maybe it should be a bit more sequel versus like this way. And my response to him was, as long as you provide unit tests in your code, right? As long as we can run those and the assumptions of what your code are doing are encoded in that testable framework that gets run every time, I'm okay with you being diverse, right? Because we can refactor that code and we can expand it, et cetera, but we have that somewhat assurance. So I would say if your open source project does not have unit tests, you need to have unit tests and lots of them. And not necessarily like the old school unit test framework of 10 years ago, but we can talk more about that next year, but we can sort of focus on what we've done. Um, other things that I missed, Debbie and chat and uh, Martin, maybe you had also, I want to also wanted to ask you what questions you had of us. <laughs> I didn't want to sort of grill. This happened super fast. I thought we would maybe have some more time. Yeah, but no, so so we are in the process now on preparing the next uh, sequence of uh, of our project. So basically we are granted this project every four years and we have to reapply every four years. And so mm. one of the things I could say or could ask you or the community is what do we have to make sure that we have available in the upcoming four years that we can contribute or that we can uh, uh, participate in, in open source projects and maybe in the future collaborate together. So that's, yeah. that's one of the main questions. And please contact me if you have more, if you want to have more details or how this process is working. So any kind of feedback is very welcome to me. I think it would be wonderful to sit together. I would be interested. It almost is like some sort of meta Tadwig standard, right? Like. What do we put in place to see these kind of things realized? Um, wow. yeah. I think we have nope. a space here to continue this conversation in a broader scope, the kind of things we've talked about before, Matt. I, I think this resonates yeah. with a lot of people and we have a lot more we could talk about. Yeah. Yeah, great topic. Um, to be honest, I did not sure where, I, I didn't know quite where we're going, but this turned out to be at least really interesting for me. I hope it was for everybody else as well. Yeah, for me, definitely as well. So, uh, and if people want to contact me later on, please email me or, or search me on Slack, whatever, and, and, and give feedback to this. Um, I have to go because they will yeah. really, the security will kick me out. Sure. But, yeah. uh, Thanks so much. Don't get, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Martin, for your time. Okay. Can't thank you enough, really, Martin. So. See you soon. Yes. Bye. Cheers. Bye.